very warm welcome to online worship with the congregation of Trinent Parish Church for Sunday the 27th of October. It's good to be with you. Our call to worship comes from Psalm 9. I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all the wonderful things you have done. I will sing with joy because of you. I will sing praise to you, almighty God. Praise the Lord. Let us worship God by singing together, let all the world in every corner sing. God, creator of all things, we come to worship you. You are all powerful. You are full of compassion. You listen when we call. You deliver us from fear. You save us from all our troubles. You hold us in your hands. We bless your name and we praise you. We come now because you have invited us to come near to you, to meet you in word, in silence, in song, and in the stirrings of our hearts. You have asked us to come near to you, to allow us to ask questions and to hear your response. Be with us now. Loving Father, we confess that we have at times decided to do life without you. We have trusted in our own strength. We confess that we have also left others moving on when they have needed our help. Lord of mercy, forgive our stubbornness and our selfishness. Loving Father, we ask that you change us and renew us in the depth of your forgiveness. And in thanks for your love and your compassion, we pray now the words of the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray in whichever words are most familiar to each one of us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
Laurie Brett is reading our lessons today. Good morning. Our first reading this morning is from Psalm 34, verse 1 to 8. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him, and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried, and was heard by the Lord, and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. Amen. Our gospel reading is from Mark chapter 10, 46 to 52. The healing of blind Bartimaeus. They came to Jericho. As he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, take heart, get up, he is calling to you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do to you? The blind man said to him, my teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. Amen. May God add his blessing to these readings. Our next hymn is Spirit of God, Come Dwell Within Me. Save 
Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. You may know the long-running BBC quiz program, Mastermind. Challenging questions are fired at the contestants who are sitting in a big black chair with a spotlight on them. And in the most recent episode, the presenter started the programme by telling the contestants that from little seeds, mighty oaks can grow, and that the ground is prepared for them, prepared for a field of dreams of winning a magnificent glass bowl and being able to say that they are master mind champion. There are set questions and set answers. There's a need to produce the correct answer and there's only one correct answer. There's no room for conversation. That's the way the program has been designed and there is one winner only. It is a challenge and a test for those who choose to enter. In the lesson we have heard read today, we hear a little a snapshot of the story of Bartimaeus. And in it, we meet someone who is far from the spotlight, so far from the spotlight that he is invisible almost to those around him. Yet the question asked of him and the answer he receives are truly life-changing, not offering a prize or a title, but a purpose and a place in life. What is offered to him is life in all its fullness. Bartimaeus is on the edge. His seat is on the ground at the side of the road on the way out of the city of Jericho. Maybe his face is turned up to hear better what is going on around him. People seem to be moving on and going elsewhere. And he must have heard Jesus' name spoken by others, perhaps in many different voices, leading him to shout out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus has had other recent encounters with people as he has traveled in his work and his ministry, with people who want something from him. He met a rich young ruler who wanted eternal life. His own followers, his disciples, James and John, wanted eternal glory with seats next to him in heaven. And Jesus has recently healed a blind man too, brought to him by people who begged him to help the man. Bartimaeus wants only mercy, Jesus' attention and his understanding. And yet for him here in this story, there is no help from others. As we heard read, many sternly ordered him to be quiet. He is treated as though he doesn't matter, almost as if he is a child to be shushed. It's not the time or the place for you to be heard. In fact, know your place. Bartimaeus 
In contrast to the previous blind man is described as a beggar, and begging was common and visible at the time he lived when medicine and treatment were limited. Times were hard with excessive taxation from the Roman government, and there was no system of social security. And although Bartimaeus couldn't work and support himself in any other way than begging, there was no sympathy for him in this story. He was excluded and left holding out his cloak, which he used for collecting the coins which were thrown at him, and also for keeping warm. For him, a cloak was a treasured possession. I wonder why he was excluded by those around him. Maybe they thought that he deserved to be where he was. Or maybe Jesus' disciples and followers wanted to control access to Jesus. Or perhaps the people around were too caught up with their own need to follow Jesus, to be there for the journey to Jerusalem, for he was leaving Jericho to go there, where they hoped he was going to make a glorious entrance and to do wonderful things as a political and military leader. They wanted to be part of that and not to miss out, and there was no time for an unscheduled stop with someone who didn't matter. We too can pause and stop and remember the bigger story that Mark tells in his gospel of Jesus' followers, his closest followers and disciples often misunderstanding Jesus and his mission. We could say that Bartimaeus saw the truth, the real truth, He could see from the response of of the crowd that no one was going to help him. It is down to him and Jesus is leaving town. So he shouts, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He can do no more. There must be times when we have all felt on our own at some time in our lives. We feel that we've been left to get on with things that nobody's helping. We can think that this can happen to all of us in some shape or some form at some time. And we are left sitting, looking for help. For Bartimaeus, the one with the persistent voice which cut through the barrier of the crowd who knows that his only hope is in Jesus. His life-saving help comes in the fact that Jesus stood still. The hurry stopped. And we may imagine some of the crowd going on in front of Jesus before realizing that he was no longer among them and having to stop and needing to come back themselves. For once Jesus stops and pays Bartimaeus attention, then the crowd have to too. There's no point going on without him. Jesus makes Bartimaeus visible, worthy of attention, worth stopping for, worth listening to. Jesus stood still. And then his words of call him here changed the crowd. The crowd who played a part in Bartimaeus' exclusion now have a part to play in his inclusion too. And the crowd changes mood. There's an about turn. They encourage him now with the words, take heart, get up. He is calling you. Bartimaeus throws off his cloak, that treasured possession, which he fully trusts that he will no longer need. And he comes to meet Jesus to be asked the open-ended question, which is full of possibility and which he has the freedom of choosing how to answer. There's no right or wrong answer. And the future, his future, now stretches out before him. When Jesus says to him, what do you want me to do for you? Jesus trusts him to know himself, to know what he desperately needs, and Jesus 
honors his freedom. Jesus can and does rescue him in his need. He restores his sight, but also restores him to his place in society. Bartimaeus can move from the side of the road onto the path to continue with the crowd to whatever Jerusalem may hold for him. He's no longer dependent on whoever passes him by. And he goes with Jesus' words ringing in his ears. Go, your faith has made you well. Jesus has said those words before to other people. He said the same words to the woman who had suffered a hemorrhage for 12 years and wanted only to touch Jesus' cloak to be healed. Your faith has made you well, you well, Jesus said to that woman. The same words we hear in the story of the leper returning to thank Jesus after he was made clean with nine others, the story that we heard last week. Jesus said to him, your faith has made you well. For Bartimaeus, without Jesus, he would have, would have been left in a passive place on the edge. With Jesus, he is moving, active on the road with others, moving forward. He knows he is precious and he belongs. Jesus has promised to us too is that our faith can make us well. His promise is that our faith, however small, as small as a seed, opens the door to a greater movement of God's power in us. For God seeks our well-being, yet we need to be open to that, to play our part for our relationship with God is living. Our faith can make us well. We pray for physical healing and we know that doesn't always happen. But this wellness that God promises is so large that it embraces the healing of being noticed, of being visible, of knowing that we are precious, of belonging, of being part of something bigger, of a crowd of people who go in faith into the uncertain future together with warm hearts and spirits full of life and leaving no one behind. We know that Jesus doesn't come to give us power and glory, worldly success, doesn't come giving us easy answers but he offers us the challenge and the help to see the possibilities of God's kingdom for everyone. Take heart, get up, he is calling you. Amen. Our next hymn is We Cannot Measure How You Heal. We have
prayers of thanksgiving and for others, let us pray. Loving Father, we give you thanks for the gift of life and for the gift of family and friends. We give you thanks for your guidance in our lives. We are grateful for the times in our lives when we have needed help and you have answered us. Just as you heard Bartimaeus when he called your name, we trust that you hear our prayers. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Loving Father, you are a God who hears when people call out to you. Hear our prayers for others now. We pray for peace. We pray for peace in Gaza and Israel and Lebanon and Ukraine and Russia and South Sudan and all places in the world which are filled with violence and conflict. We pray for those with the power to make peace, that your power may flow through them, offering new possibilities for peace not yet thought of. We pray for all who suffer now in war. Grant them your healing, Lord. Loving Father, we pray for the earth which was made perfect by you. We pray that your voice will break through to us to keep us steady on the path of caring well for the world and the places we live in. We pray for the church, that we may be your hands and feet in all our communities. We pray for all those in positions of authority, that they may know your wisdom and courage, that they may decide for the things which lift up those who are sidelined and living in poverty so that they may have full lives. Lord, show us and wake us up too to play our part. We pray for all those who are homeless and begging in our streets today and for those who help them. Loving Father, we pray for those who are lonely, in desperate need of help, those who are ignored and feel left out. We pray that they may find love and community, open our eyes to notice them too. Help us to make a space to call home for those who need a home. And we pray for those who feel overwhelmed today that they may find rest in you. Loving Father, we pray for your comfort and peace for those who are mourning the loss of loved ones. And we pray for those who suffer now illness in mind, body or spirit for those undergoing difficult treatment, and for those for whom there is yet no treatment. May we and they know your courage, your comfort, your healing, and your hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers, and we lift them up to you in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Our final hymn is Through the Love of God Our Saviour, All Will Be Well.
May you go from this time of worship in peace and love to serve the Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest on you and all those you love and pray for today, now and even forevermore. Amen.